Hello, hello, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Expert to Experts. And uh, as I always tell you, this is an amazing show where we bring you the best experts in the world in different fields, okay? So a lot of you have been asking me, Moses, but how do you go Okay, so right now I'm here to answer you this question and I have the privilege and the honor of introducing you uh, somebody that now I call a friend, okay? Uh, actually, we met together in 2018, but we didn't have the chance to chat because I was busy running the event of Gary V and he was one of our uh people attending the event of gary v together with his brother they have over 20 years of experience on uh video making photography now he brought his knowledge in the marketing and corporate world with his passion of video making music edition media production and now he is living his life and is making his passion be his profit He's an amazing dad, okay? And he's so proud of his daughter. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your hands and give a round of applause for Steven Nan. And wait, wait a second, we are live. There we go. Hello, yeah. Steven, welcome. Hello, how you doing? You good? That was a very good, that was a very nice welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Directly from Birmingham, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Steven. For the friend Steve, <laughs> how are you yeah. doing, my friend? I'm very good, mate. Yeah, it's been a busy old time uh, the last few weeks, but yeah, I'm starting to get straight again. That's so great. good. That's great. Everybody that we know is so busy right now during this COVID, and that's really great because it yeah. all breaks down on how you structure your business and how you look at uh, something that could be a threat like COVID. You turn it around and you look at it as an amazing opportunity. And by the way, this is the time where everybody had to jump in and turn on the camera and find a way of being noticed and being seen. For example, yeah. I had a schedule that I had to be in Portugal to speak to 5,000 people. I had to go in Las Vegas. I had to go um, in, in Australia. I had all stages booked. But COVID came in, the world shut down, and I had to get on camera. So uh, I'm so glad that you're here because we've got a lot of people who want to know how to become better on camera and how to go uh, live and reach and give away the message. So I have a quick question straight away for you right now, Stephen. Okay. Stephen, could you tell me and tell all our audience what... Um, uh, the biggest challenges in going out and getting the camera and putting out your content and what you know? What are the biggest challenges? Or what are the biggest mistakes people do in this action? I think the biggest thing that I come across is confidence. It's people are very comfortable face to face with another person, and people are very comfortable over the phone. But for some reason, you get one of these things and you switch the camera on and you start filming and they just fall to pieces and they just forget how to speak. They forget how to talk, something they've been doing since they were like three years old. Just the skill just vanishes from them. And it's it's been quite fascinating working with different people, some of which are very confident, high ticket selling people who went with a camera in front of them fall to pieces like a child. And it's, and it's quite interesting to watch that happen because you know that they've got really good information to give. Yeah, they've got a lot of value. Yeah, but for some reason they just can't seem to get it out. Um, so that's probably the number one challenge I come across. Yeah, and just, just to confirm what you are saying, um, give me a stage give me a microphone and I know what to do. Yeah. Give me a camera and I have to look at a box. And I, have, I mean, <laughs> I just have to be there and, and, and look like this. Uh, it looks, it sounds really weird. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> I was fascinated with the term vlogging um, for many years, though, before I ever started doing videos myself. I was a big follower of a guy called Casey Neistat, who basically invented vlogging. He was the first real YouTuber that started this reality TV style vlog, daily vlog thing. Um, so I have been watching it for many years. So I feel like I maybe practiced it subconsciously, like even without putting content out for a, quite a number of years before I actually did a piece that I then posted. Um, but I tend to do that with a lot of things. I tend to like to practice perfect and then not necessarily perfect, but practice, 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 and then get it out. And I think that's how you build confidence by just doing yeah. And uh, talking about practice and how you build confidence, um, could it be possible that one of the major mistakes that uh, people do when they go in front of camera and they cannot deliver that message and create that content, it's that they want things to be perfect. I want to have the right lighting. I want to have the right equipment. I want to have this. I want to have that. I want to have this. So how can perfectionism be a stumble and an obstacle in putting out your content out there it's again it's it's up there with i still i think that perfectionism is an excuse for i'm not confident enough and i still think it comes Ooh. back to confidence i'll give you a great example i work with a lot of musicians and musicians more than anybody suffer from perfectionism because they want the song to be perfect and here's what i always say to them unless you record a song in the best studio in the world, by the best producer, with the best acoustically treated rooms, the best microphones, you are never going to have anywhere near the perfect record. Mm -hmm. So so you have two options. You either stop doing what you're doing, forget it, you're never going to do it, or you just put out what you've got and get better at it. Because if I look back at the stuff that I recorded 10 years, 10, 12, 15 years ago when I started doing it, it's dismal. It's so bad. But at the time, I really loved it. But now it's awful. And obviously now my skills have got better. It, it's great. But I think you just have to get over the fact that your first few are not going to be that good. Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember, I remember my first, my very first video that I put out on YouTube I was creating some content to put on LinkedIn and I was talking of um, uh, if it's a good thing to have um, cast your competition in your uh, friend list on LinkedIn as followers. And I did that video. I was so excited. I was so pumped. And it was my first video editing. I put my name. But I used the camera of my uh, laptop. Yeah. And... Watching it right now, I'm so embarrassed. But at the same time, I said, you know what? I had the courage to step up and do it. Yeah. Okay. Then the yeah. next video, I did it with an iPhone. And then the other video, I did it with, um, with, with, with the, an Nikon camera. And now I have a vlogging camera, which I'm yeah. so happy. But as you said, you doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, and doing it. So that's yeah. how it is. Yeah, we. I also am involved in sort of martial arts and things over the years. And one of the slogans that is up on the wall is "Train hard, fight easy." So the idea being train is hard. train hard, fight easy. Oh, train. Uh, okay, train hard, fight easy. Amazing. I like it. I'm gonna. So, I'm gonna copy that. <laughs> so the the idea with that is is you do something so often, so repetitively that you can't make a mistake. And if you do make a mistake, you know how to deal with it because you've practiced the scenario a thousand times before. Mm -hmm. I think live video, like what we're doing now, and video content that you make, create, and edit are two completely different things. Um, and they do need to be treated differently when it comes to the way in which you present on them, I think. Okay. Okay. So, for example, with live, if I'm talking to you as we are now, we're just having a conversation. So that makes it nice and easy. But if you're talking to a screen and there is no voice coming back, you've got to fill that time and space. 
One yeah. of the biggest one of the biggest problems people have when creating video content is they haven't pre-thought out or planned what they are going to do or say. What is the message of this video? Why am I putting the video out? And what do I want to get across? Sometimes by just simply writing three, four, five bullet points down before I start a video myself, still to this day, even though I've made thousands of them, I will have four or five bullet points in my hand just to refer to if I need to. And that is enough for me to then to be able to just reel it off the tongue. Because unless I Absolutely. do that and there's no structure, the video makes no sense. So yeah, that... and, and this comes also from your heritage as a musician. Because as a musician, even if you know the piece you are playing, you always want to have in front of you uh, the chords, just, just in case, even if you know it, just want always to have it in front of you so you can always recall. So we've got Lily. Lily is one of our, um, our, our, our faithful, loyal clients. And uh, she works also with us. And uh, she's saying, practice, practice, practice. And uh, this is amazing. For example, um, Lily is a teacher and she's also a translator. And she has a company where she offers English translation um, for documents, okay? Now, uh, is video content applicable on any type of industry? I mean, the question is this. A lot of people try to do ads, and me and you, we, had about, we, we spoke about this, yeah. of how uh, the world of ads is totally changing. Now, yes. somebody who is like Lily, who has a business related to translation, how can a video content be impactful and get the message out and bring in the sale in? So recently I had an accountant approach me. <laughs> so he and he said that he wanted to maybe do some video content, but he didn't know what kind of content he could possibly put out that would bring value because it's accountancy and accountancy is boring. That is his <laughs> words, not mine. OK, his words. And I said, that well, to me, that's quite simple because as the viewer, I know nothing about taxes. Right. Which is why I've got an accountant. Right. But there are some things that I really do wish that I knew. So I said to him, I said, well, how would I do, you know, X, Y, Z? And he told me and I said, make a video about that. So rather than making an advert in his case, which may not have worked because it, it might have been a bit cumbersome, his form of video was content that was informative. So, for example, he was just giving some advice on the best way to store your information for your accountant. So your incoming, your expenditures, your receipts, etc. And he showed you how to use a particular tool that would help you collate all that information so that you can then just send it to your accountant and then everything's done nice and easy. It was one of these apps um, that you can use, um, like Zero, things like that. And he made that video and then he started, people started saying, oh, thanks for that. That was really useful information. I didn't know I was allowed to claim for this. I didn't know I was allowed to claim for that on my expenses, etc. And as a result, he picked up clients. And, and that's, you haven't always got to try and be too clever. And I think that's one of the biggest problems. Everyone's trying to make a Coca-Cola advert or a Pepsi advert or a, you know, a McDonald's advert with all high, big production. Customer has a problem. You have a solution. Give them the solution. That's all they want. It doesn't need to be too complicated. People are overcomplicating video adverts massively. Mm -hmm. If you add value and you bring value consistently to your viewers, they will buy from you. Simple as that. So uh, the strategy of video content can work for any type of industry. Because uh, in, my, in my coaching and consulting business, a lot of people tell me, hey, Moses, but this doesn't work for my business. My business is different. And they just, I have they just... learned in the, age, in, in the time right now that... Uh, especially now that everybody is at home, especially right now that all the world is in these hands, you need to be able to reach people. And this is the best time in history, reach people, okay? Now, Stephen, 
But obviously, your journey wasn't like this all the time, easy like that, where you are an expert in making videos, okay? Where you are working with most of the biggest speakers in UK, I've been working with you, some of the companies have been working with you, okay? And some of our audience knows Skip, okay? You have been working also with Skip and helping him and uh, supporting him in delivering out messages and video content. Now, when it comes to your story, what was the turning point that made and built up Stephen that we know right now? So I was working in a sales development role where I was just phone call, phone call, phone call. I've been doing it for many years, hated it. <laughs> I, like, I just had enough of it. Um, and then I, I started, funnily enough, following Gary V um, many years ago um, on YouTube. And I started just following, I just liked the way he delivered his messages. He was a bit very much no nonsense, swears a little bit too much, but you know, <laughs> he, but he, he, his message was very straight to the point. Um, it, it, and it gave me value, so I kept coming back. So anyway, I keep watching these videos. And then one day I'm sat at work, and I'm like, I've had enough for this. I need to try something different. So out of my own pocket and my own wages, I started running Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads and Instagram ads for the business that I work for. They didn't know I was doing this. I then started posting little video clips, only 15 seconds, and then some text, etc. And all of a sudden, I started getting lots of leads coming through. The phone started ringing. My boss then said to me, Steve, you, you're getting business, but you're not picking up the phone. So how, how is this happening? So obviously, I explained. And then he made me a marketing manager. So then I became the company's marketing manager. As a result, I then wanted to train myself because I've never had any formal training. I've never been to university, college, didn't do any formal training whatsoever in marketing or video or music. So I decided that I would go on some courses. And because I'd been following Gary V, I knew a guy called Shaquille, who was also a speaker. He was at the time selling tickets for the Gary V show. I bought a couple of tickets. We was meant we had the cheapest tickets in the house as well. We were sat right at the back. So we turn up. Um, I just saw Tucker's message then. Um, we turn up at the show, and he, there was a sign somewhere saying no cameras or something. And I decided to ignore that. And um, I got my camera out with a big microphone on the top and a little bit over the top. And I got my brother to do the same. And we both just walked in vlogging immediately as soon as we walked through the door. And that's when we met Tokta, our friend now. She immediately spotted us and we thought we was going to get thrown out for filming. <laughs> so that's what we immediately thought. But then she said, what do you do? Do you make videos, etc." We said, yeah, Mike's a photographer. I'm a videographer, etc." She got us to sign some contract. I don't know what it was, but we signed it anyway. <laughs> um, and then she upgraded our seats um, to sit in this sort of VIP section right at the front where we basically just use that opportunity then during that week to just network, 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 network like crazy. Um, and we had a lot of people asking us what we were doing with the cameras. And I got a lot of business from that weekend. Um, there was a lot of people that we met there that I'm still in touch with. In fact, yeah. almost everyone that I met at that event, I'm still in fairly regular contact with to this day. And, and that for me, after I did that, event and Gary V said something while he was on stage and it just hit home with me and I was just like it didn't quite say it in so many words but it was basically saying like if you love something enough just go do it so I walked into work the following day and I handed him my notice wow and that was that <laughs> and I had no idea what I was going to do I, I didn't have a plan really I didn't say to myself, okay, well, I'm first I'm going to build up lots of work and then hand him a notice. I just kind of went in there, guns blazing. I went, right, I've had enough. I want to leave. So <laughs> during my last month of working there, working my notice, I negotiated a deal with the company where I would still work for them, but I'd work for them self-employed. 
So that yeah. meant I, I got to keep some of my regular income, which was a bit of a security blanket for me then to start my business. And that's, that's, that's it. That's pretty much how it happened. Yeah, it took courage and it took your action. But that helped you follow what was deep inside of you. There was a deep desire of outgrowing something, moving forward and create a better future for your family. Okay. Yeah. Now, we've got a question from Lily. And she's saying, what the best duration of a video providing value would be? It does totally depend on what it is that you're offering. So, for instance, there's a very, very good um, YouTuber. I could, I'll add some links in your, you know, in the description a little bit later on for your viewers of some really good people that I follow. But there is one guy in particular that only makes Instagram story videos, but he makes them really, really, really well. And he doesn't make long videos at all. His videos are all just 15 seconds. And then there are other people that will make videos for 20, 30 minutes. So it, it really depends on what kind of service or product you're selling. If she was to tell me what kind of service she was offering, I'd, I'd be able to tell her. But if, if you're trying to offer value in the form of an informational video and you're going to do a long form video on YouTube, for example, I would say typically between 10 and 13 minutes tends to be a good because what you want to do with YouTube is you want to get that good intro at the beginning to make sure people are in. Then you want to give them the sort of schedule of what you're going to cover off in the video. Then you want to give them the main bit of content and then you need to give them a reason to come back at the end. So you need to make sure you've got a call to action at the end for them to come back to the channel. And that usually is between sort of 10 to 12 minutes. And the reason you want to do it that long is because YouTube's algorithm and the way it works is very much based on watch time and not views. So people get very confused and they like, I need more views. I need more views. Well, yeah, you do need the views, but more importantly, you need the watch time. So mm -hmm. how you structure your videos is important. But between 10 and 13 minutes for informational videos tend to work very well or even tutorial type videos. Podcasts could be, I mean, you, do you watch Joe Rogan's podcast? They go on for three or four hours. But it just totally depends on the type of thing that you're trying to promote. Um, uh -huh. there, is, there is no definitive Wow, but uh, amazing insight because I was devastated when I was putting a good content on YouTube and I was saying this video is going to be amazing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to break uh, the platform. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to break the platform. And then I see that my, my video has very few views, but at the same time, people who watched it, watched it, almost till the end or they watched all the video and now yeah. you have given us an amazing insight um steve has just said right now that uh, the algorithm of youtube works not on how many people have viewed it but on the watch length for yeah. how long have they been there watching the video this yeah, is so, so it, and only so, an expert can give you guys this advice i never knew about it thank you steve so basically, if you consistently, because again, the way YouTube works is you have to be very consistent with these things. So you might see that your views stay low for some time. There are other things that you also need to look at with YouTube, though. YouTube is a very difficult platform to crack, but the rewards, if you get it right, are very high. Organic reach on any platform nowadays is difficult. So you have to just remember that if you are going to go down the YouTube route, that YouTube is a search engine. So when you're titling your videos, it needs to be something that people are going to be searching for. If you use very fast... Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is really important. Everybody who is watching or has just joined us right now, we've got Steve, who is an expert on video content. And now he has just thrown a silent bomb but it's so vital. Let me repeat it again. He said that YouTube is not a platform just for entertainment. YouTube is Google. So it is a search engine. Yeah. And this changes the game. Yeah. Because, Go ahead. So 
when you're making a video, especially if it's for business purposes, you want to be having a look at how or what people are searching for. And you can do this very easily by just going onto Google and just typing in a search and having a look at what people are searching for in your subject matter. Then you make a video about that particular subject. There's lots of tools you can use to do that. Um, again, I, I go over stuff like this in a course that I'm actually developing, but there's lots of things you can do in order to be able to see what's trending, what people are talking about. For example, going back to um, your lady's question earlier, if right now the Chancellor's budget is very, very hot topic, okay? So if you're a business person and you want to offer advice, it might be a good idea to say something like, how will the Chancellor's budget affect your business? Because that's a trending topic right now. So that is something that people are going to search for. They're going to put, how is the budget going to affect my business? How is the, people are going to search for that term? And that's the one of the most important things with YouTube. Titles are super important. Your descriptions are super important. They take that into account. Your hashtags that you use when you upload the video are important. They've got to be things that people want to find out. Yes, people do vlog. Yes, people do entertaining videos. And yes, they can go viral. But it's such a tiny percentage of videos that go viral. The ones that will bring value and bring you customers or fans in the music world, for instance, is going to be the content that they search for. So as a musician, it's super hard because no one's searching for my songs because they don't know who I am. So as well as just being a musician now, I also have to become a brand. So when I do videos on my new YouTube channel, which I've only just started, I'm now putting out tutorial videos as well to get people to come to my channel so they can then see the other content that I'm creating. And then mm -hmm. they might they might stick around if they like it. Does that make sense? So it's... yeah. That's how you have to remember with YouTube it is a platform that is designed as a search engine first. So That's amazing. That is, and, and the other thing as well with any of these video platforms, if you're trying to be a celebrity, then that again is a totally different ball game. If you're trying to become an influencer, and I, I, I use that term because it's what get banded around, you, you have no idea how much money these influencers are investing on Google ads, YouTube advertising, Instagram advertising. They are spending lots of money. People just think you post a video, everyone sees it. That's just not the case anymore. So unless you got like a giant name on your show, a giant name, and that name was just naturally who's going to pull lots of views. But other than that, it, it's very difficult. So you do have to be persistent. You've got to be consistent. You've got to keep going because it might not be your first video that blows up. It might not be your 20th. It might be your 97th video that blows up. But you have to just keep putting them out and you've got to be consistent with it. YouTube is it's like a snowball. OK, so your first 100 subscribers are the hardest to get. Your first thousand is a little bit easier. Your first 100,000 is getting easier because once a channel has a 1,000 subscribers, YouTube is now pushing your channel out to more people because people are watching your videos all the way through. They're clicking on subscribe. So YouTube's algorithm is going, hold on. People are watching this for 75% or more of the video and they're subscribing to the channel. Therefore, this content must be good. So we're going to push it out to more people. And that's, in a nutshell, how YouTube works. Okay. But it's hard. It's not it, anyone that thinks it's easy is going to be in for a rude awakening because <laughs> it's just not. If it was easy, everybody would be rich, yes, thin, <laughs> and happy. How many people <laughs> yeah. are thin, rich, and happy? All the three together. So it's uh, not easy. I'm none of them. <laughs> well, I'm happy, but I'm not rich or thin at the moment either. Lockdown's yeah. been feeding me too much, and um. Um, how important and uh, relevant is the storytelling? Because people are fascinated by the journey of the hero. Like, for example, your journey, 
you are doing a corporate job, you are bored, you didn't want that, then you went this, then you, the next day you went, you resigned, and then now you're doing what you love, you're happy with your family. So that's the journey of the hero. So storytelling, how vital and what is the role of storytelling in creating video content that can help sell? Okay, so people, we've all seen the TV series X Factor. Yeah. Okay, and we've all seen the TV series The Voice, yeah? Why is X Factor, why is it that the X Factor contestants always go on to be far more successful than the voice contestants? Why, why, why do you think that is? Because, go on. Sorry, wait a second. I, I, okay, I was putting. Yeah, there we go. That's okay. The, the number one reason why X Factor contestants are so much more successful is because from day one, they sell the story of the person mm -hmm. that's taking part. Now they do that. We've they do that with um, the voice, but the voice is only on. The live shows are only on for about three or four weeks. X Factor drags on for three months. So okay. for a quarter of a year of your life, you're seeing these same faces on TV. You're getting to know them. You're getting to know their story. You're getting to know where they came from. You're getting to know their hardship. You get to... So you start rooting for them because they're an underdog. There is some, you know, especially in Britain, we love an underdog. So, you know, they, you get to know the character. And that's why you end up voting for them. And that's why you end up buying their music. And that's why you end up becoming a fan. No one is buying music. If if one of those X Factor contestants wasn't on X Factor and they released that very same song, it would not sell a single record maybe and maybe mm -hmm. do a few hundred streams. But because people know the character and they know the person, that's why. Now, we're about to launch a very ambitious project, um, which is creating a brand new sports network. And how we plan to make that big is all through storytelling, following the fighter's journey. We're going to be doing lots of documentaries on the build-up to the fights. So we're going to go into the day in the life of a fighter, how they eat, how they train, how they have to go to work and then go training, some of them, because they may be not on big money yet. Then we'll follow them into the ring. Then we'll film the fight. Then we'll see what they're like afterwards with the injuries. We're going to sell the story. We want people to know the character of the person before they get in the ring. So when they get in the ring, you've picked your side. I'm going to, I want this guy to win or this girl to win. And that's who I'm rooting for. And that's how the best fighters in the world sell so many tickets. Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor have got the biggest mouths in the world. It's no surprise that they sell the most tickets. Because everyone loves the story of Conor McGregor. Why do they love the story of Conor McGregor? Was it because he was a brilliant martial artist? No. Because six years ago, or four years before he joined UFC, he was getting bills through his door, final demands. He didn't work. He was unemployed. And he went from unemployed to a multimillionaire in four years because his belief that he was going to be the greatest was so strong and he let his mouth do the talking, but he also backed it up in the ring. But if he hadn't have had that mouth and he hadn't have told that story, he would not have sold the tickets he sold. It's just, that's just, that's just why the fight game has always used these tick for tat battles because they sell the tickets. You'll yeah. pick your team. I'll pick my team. I'll put money on him to win. You'll put money on him to win. And Floyd Mayweather used to sell tickets because people were tuning in because they wanted to see him get beat. But he never lost, which then makes his next fight more expensive. Storytelling is all of it. It's all of it. If you've got nothing to say or nothing to do, you know, then, then why is your audience tuning in in the first place? I, okay. I just... I just discovered a really good YouTuber, by the way. I, I, I tell everyone to go and watch. She's, her name's Julie Nolke. She's a comedian. And she's been making videos, comed comedy sketches during lockdown. Go and watch her videos, and then you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. 
because they are perfect. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to when it comes to storytelling, okay, how can we use? Uh, can you give us a quick tip of a structure of how storytelling could be effective for us in um, in, in our businesses? Yeah. So. For yourself, example, for example, you could you could put out a doc mini documentary that you could film yourself. You could do it on a phone. You don't need to be fancy, but you could film a little documentary just showing people old footage of the shows that you used to speak at when you first started speaking, and and how maybe you thought that you might not get to the big stage. You know, you might not ever get to this particular level. And then, you know, a few years down the line, you got this one opportunity that you took, you know, and then and you, you show. I think the best way to get people to buy into you rather than trying to convince them that you're good, show them. Show them, show them the proven track, because one of the things I always say to people is it's difficult like to to believe someone that just makes stuff up. But if they've got evidence and you can prove it, tell that story because people will become to like and trust you a lot better, a lot more. I had um, I had a customer that I did some work for, and I made a huge mistake. I, I made a real big balls up basically. <laughs> I messed it up bad, and it was one of the first big jobs I ever got. And I tell that story to a lot of my clients and people go, why would you tell someone about a mistake you made? I said, because the mistake was so big, I'll never make it again. <laughs> and I, I always tell people like, like they'll say, where do you store my footage afterwards? How long will you keep it for, et cetera. And I'll say to them, look, I back all footage up for five years because this happened in the past. You just build people's confidence up that you've been there, you've done it. But I think anyone can do that. I think we've all, We've all lived a life. It, it's not, you just, I think people underestimate what they can do and they underestimate what their input is. Like everyone's got a story to tell, but some people seem to think that other people's stories are more important than theirs. And that's not the case. Someone is going to resonate with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, Tip for all of you who uh, would like to put out video content and uh, impact your audience, sell more, make sure that you put out a storytelling format. And the easiest storytelling process that Stephen has just shared with us is don't try to convince anybody, but share with them uh, the process, how you started and how you got to that point because that will resonate with them and they will think, oh, it's possible. I can also get there. Oh, how can I get there? Definitely this guy knows how to lead me and get me to that point. Yeah. So Stephen, we are getting to the final point of this interview, but for all of you who are watching us right now, I promise we are gonna have sooner or later an amazing workshop with, uh, with Stephen, where he's gonna show us step by step how to create a video content. And he is preparing a small program, which is for which will be available, but we'll talk about this another moment. But just want to let you know, we're gonna have back Stephen pretty soon, where he's gonna show us and, and give us direct steps, okay? For example, one of the things that Stephen told me is make sure that uh, um, um, on a video that I was trying to produce, Okay, you just put some adjustments, uh, a, a word, a color. Okay, and he was just saying, please just get your phone, do it, do raw footage because that's what people like. You don't have to be perfect and polished because no. when you are polished, people resonate like, oh, that's fake, that's not real, it's far away from my from my lifestyle. But when you yeah. go ordinary and you're normal, you get to touch their heart. OK, yeah, absolutely. I think that is really true. And I think that's why reality TV is so popular and um, vlogging has become extremely popular because you get a little insight into their life. Now, you do have to take it with a pinch of salt, though. This is the one warning I will give people. 
don't watch other people's videos and copy what they're doing because there are a lot of fake fakers out there. Uh, don't when people are putting out videos showing their great life, it's not always great. Like one of the reasons why I'm so honest with what I do, for example, I'm not anywhere near the situation I want to be in right now, as it stands right now. I've actually recently had to take a couple of steps backwards, maybe five steps backwards. I've had to move house. I've had to move where I wanted to live in. I've had to go somewhere else, which I didn't necessarily want to do. I'm using what I've then got spare so I can reinvest, so I can then grow this other thing. So I'm moving a few steps backwards with the vision to being able to move forwards a bit further down the line. Nothing's perfect. And I actually think that one of the reasons why people come to me is because I don't pretend to be something I'm not. I will never drive, even if I've got money, I doubt I will drive a flash car. I just don't, those kind of things don't interest me. I always want the next project. I always want something bigger. I think that interests me more than material things. So don't always buy into, you know, someone's got a Lamborghini. They've rented it. They haven't bought it. It's not their car. Don't buy into the fake stuff because a lot of people do that as well. And I say that all the time. It's not real. It just some of it is, you know, Tony Robbins, he's got a jet, <laughs> but not everyone else. Everyone else is just pretending. So, yeah. Yeah. And because of that advice, okay, I started whenever I walk around, okay, I have my, my vlogging camera, okay, I got this. So I just go around and I just shoot and share stuff and then I put it out. And I don't care if uh, I didn't go to the barber, by the way, in UK, the barbers are closed. So yeah. I have to keep this for a that's, long while. That's why I've got a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I usually I'm I'm so sharp, okay. But now <laughs> the condition is that, so I have just go natural as I am, okay. The other day it was so cold, it was sunny, but it was so cold. I had my hoodie, I had my jacket, and I just shot the video. It doesn't matter because I want people to see who I am for who I am. Not yeah. just try to be in a different way. And sometimes I just grab my phone and do videos with my phone. So there's minimum editing. It's just natural. There's some noise in the background, kids running or an airplane passing or the traffic. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's fine. That's what people want more and more and more. And I'm going to give it to them. Because it's, it's real. It's real. And I think if you give things pe to pe there's always a time and a place for a fancy advert. There's always a time and a place for high production. Believe me, I love it. I love getting to play with toys, big cameras, nice lights, microphones. But 90% of the time, even though I own cinema grade cameras, 90% of the time I'll shoot on this. And I'm not precious about it. Um, it's use what you've got available. I'm doing a live stream now and I trust me, I'm going crazy in my head because I know that the lighting in the situation I'm in right now is terrible. But, Absolutely. <laughs> but, but it's what I've got available right this minute and what is on you at that time is the best tool to use. And that's why mobile phones are so great because you can get relatively good audio. Quite. The only thing I would say from a technical point of view, if I could just drop this one in, if you're going to make videos, right? And I bet I haven't got it anywhere near me. I haven't. If you're going to make videos, something that is more, everybody worries about having a 4K camera or high resolution video. Most people listen to videos with earphones in. Yeah. Okay. Make sure that you prioritize audio over video sure. quality because I it's a fact that people are 70% more likely to continue watching your video if the video quality is bad, but the audio quality is good. Yeah. But if it's the other way around, they will not watch the video. Yeah. So that would be my only technical advice. Make sure audio is, is good. Yeah. And the, the, if you want to tip on a microphone to go and buy, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but there's a, a microphone for... Android and iPhones called the Rode Video Mic Me L. And if you buy that microphone, it just plugs straight into your phone and you've got crisp, super good quality audio straight away. Okay. 
So there you go. Thank you, just... team, and thank you for the advice. <laughs> now, before we leave, I just want to have, um, if you can, one, or if you can, really, three, three tips, one or three tips that can, that somebody who is watching right now, us, can start tomorrow creating video content and putting it out on Facebook or on YouTube. What are the three tips from Steven? Go ahead. Okay. First one, don't create document. Document everything because documenting is better than trying to come up with stuff. If you're already doing it and you document it, it's real. It's happening right now. You're going to bring more value. Second tip would be to add some structure to your video. When you wake up in the morning, think about what the message is for today. What do I want to put across to my followers? How is this video going to bring them any value? And how can I put that across in a message? And the third thing I would say is when you've done that video and it doesn't look perfect, just post it anyway. What was the first one? So the first one was document. Just okay. document. Just document. I don't create content. I literally, I only create content when a customer asks me to. When I'm creating content of my own, 99 times out of 100, I'm already doing another client's work. So I will literally just document what I'm doing for the client. Because it's showing, it's showing people that I'm actually doing the job. So rather than me shooting a big fancy behind the scenes video showing up, I'll just do a bit of footage on my phone and my Instagram stories. And I'll say, today I'm just on a shoot with this person. I'll get them in the video so I can tag them. And then I'll put that out and then they'll share it. And then their people will see it. And that is literally all I do. I don't actually, I'm telling everyone today how to make videos, but I don't actually make videos really for myself. I very rarely do. Um, I only ever make videos for other people. So for me, it's actually better to just document via Instagram stories. So when Lily asked earlier what type of content or video content length is best, for me, it's just short and sharp. Just show people every day that I'm working. That's all I have to do. I don't really need to make adverts. So all right. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. And uh, Lily appreciated your advice about the audio because she realized that uh, she was neglecting this aspect of uh, creating video. So, yeah, Lily, you're right. We learned from our mistakes and thank you for your contribution. Then also uh, Lucia, uh, she's saying thank you. Uh, then also uh, Zorka from Germany, she's also saying uh, thank you. And, uh, yeah, it was amazing to have you with us, Stephen. Um, I know your daughter is waiting for you. As oh, she's, she's in bed now. She's, she's in, in bed, bed now. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much to have sacrificed and to have spent time with us. No, and uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, this is just the beginning. Oh, there's so much more. <laughs> yeah, this is just the beginning. And we will plan and we will structure together when to do um, this workshop where we can add more value and we will see how we can help more people. Um, as, as we can see, podcast there saying we love you, we thank you, and uh, we really appreciate what you have done. And um, yeah, so seriously, Steve, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We love you. Thank we you appreciate me. what you have done. And there's lots of value. And for those of you who are watching um, the recording, okay, because right now we are live, you are watching the recording. If this has been of any help, please make sure that you share this and you spread the word to other people. And for those of you who want to be part of the next workshop that we will do with Stephen or with other guests, you need to sign in and jump into the membership, okay? Uh, I'm going to either me, uh, the team is going to put right now the links right there where you can subscribe. It's £37 a month, so you can attend every single Thursday a workshop. So imagine you have uh, every single month four experts in different areas that come and help you, support you, and give you authentic value. 
okay? Then Mondays are for everybody. Mondays access for everybody, and Thursday is only for a limited number of people, okay? So we are getting in uh, and starting to play on a different level. We're going to have even more experts, like today we have had uh, Stephen, and we are going to be practical because we want to provide for you tools that can help you go forward in your life in a better way. All right. So today we spoke about um, uh, making video content. Okay. And next time, stay tuned because we're going to have another amazing expert coming in to support us and to provide amazing value for you. So in the comments, there's the link where you can just jump in, sign in, and register, and uh, we'll be there for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And for those of you who haven't subscribed, subscribe on our YouTube, um, on my YouTube page, and see you next time. Thank you so much, Stephen. It was no our problem. pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. And uh, for all of you who are out there, have an amazing rest of the evening. Stay strong and have a blessed rest of the day. Ciao. Bye.